Let's talk about Shakespeare. Uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company uh, up there in Stratford. I'm not sure quite where this uh, play is going to appear. I assume it's at Stratford, uh, where their headquarters is. The Merry Wives of Windsor features, of course, the larger-than-life rogue uh, Sir John Falstaff. Uh, basically, he's known as the Fat Knight, uh, always portrayed as a big rosy cheek guy, too much booze flowing around, smokes too much, eats too much... Uh, uh, a lovable rogue, uh, but uh, there he's uh, obviously he's in a, uh, a several of Shakespeare's plays. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth I loved the character so much when she saw him in Henry the Fourth. He asked she asked Shakespeare to write uh, him into more plays. She said she'd love to see him fall in love, and that's what happens in the Merry Wives of Windsor. Uh, now. Uh, the thing is, this new production will come with a trigger warning uh, in so far as uh, it will, uh, the, uh, people who go to see this play uh, will be warned that uh, the play contains bullying in the form of body shaming. Uh, it also warns uh, theatre goers that this production contains, well, it's in the play really, uh, references to alcohol and characters drinking alcohol on stage and e cigarettes, I'm assuming. It's one of these modern productions, modern dress productions. I don't think they had e-cigarettes back in Shakespeare's age. Uh, but let's talk to uh, the deputy editor of the stage, Matt Hemley. Hi, Matt. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, what is your feeling about this? My feeling is I, I don't quite understand it because, you know, uh, theatres, uh, particularly the RSC, but theatres have been putting on Shakespeare plays for 500 years. Uh, including the Merry Wives of Windsor, why all of a sudden uh, would you need a trigger warning uh, saying that, uh, you know, the f character of Falstaff uh, contains or uh, attracts bullying in the form of body shaming? And if you're going to go and see a play containing John Falstaff, uh, alcohol and drinking alcohol are, are likely to be part of the pageant, aren't they? What, why, why would the RSC feel it's necessary to warn theatre goes about uh, this content? Well, I mean, first of all, I think, playing devil's advocate, the idea that we're warning audiences is probably a bit of a stretch because actually these con the content warnings really, and they're on the website for the show and you have to find them, you have to seek them out. It's not like the RSC is standing up before the curtain goes up and telling audiences this is what's going to happen and this is what you're going to see. So I think really the, the purpose is if, if you want to know and you feel that like you need to know, you can find uh, uh, what what this show is going to contain in terms of themes and things that might shock or upset. But for most audiences, that probably won't be something that would be considered. You don't have to do it. You don't have to read it. Therefore, don't look for it. Uh, fair enough. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, we've, we've heard of, uh, you know, trigger warnings or or call them what you will, warnings. You don't have to call them trigger warnings. Uh, you know, for, you know, Macbeth may contain a bit of murder sort of thing. I mean, th these, we know that Macbeth contains murder. We know, you know, I, I suppose if you give me a brand new production and it's full of shocking murders or shocking scenes uh, that people know nothing about, you, you might want to say, well, be a bit careful here. But I just don't get it with these plays that were written five centuries ago. Yeah, but I think that comes from a position of assuming that everybody knows Shakespeare. And and that's a kind of, you know, you could argue that's a club that not everybody has been part of. And for lots of you know, people are going to shows and discovering stuff all the time. Younger audiences, people are going to Shakespeare the first time. I don't think we should assume that everybody knows what's going to be in a Shakespeare production. And also, I, I do kind of feel like it's the way that society has moved uh, in, in, in respect of the fact we're being more responsible to people's needs and you could say you know we in the same way we look, we look after physical health with strobe warnings and loud gunshot noises why would we not look after people's mental health by telling them that there may be things that they could find upsetting i mean i haven't experienced murder in my life but i might find that upsetting had i experienced it and went to see a show which featured a lot of murder and also i'd say that you know as productions get more and more technical more and more advanced they can be more graphic like you know shakespeare we can we, we do things much more uh, visually and physically on stage nowadays. So, you know, it could be upsetting for many audience members. Yeah, they can be very dramatic these days, uh, Shakespeare productions. But um, uh, bullying, uh, this is about Falstaff, of course. 
Bullying in the form of body shaming. I mean, that's what the comedy revolves around. Uh, taking the mickey out of this fat guy who drinks too much, and smokes too much and eats too much. I mean, that's the comedy. And yet now we're getting warned that, it, that this comedy is in fact bullying in the form of body shaming. I mean, it is a bit of a stretch, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's because, like I said, it's because, I guess it's because it's, that's the way we've moved in our society as a whole. I don't think this is particularly about theatre. I think this goes across the whole of society and that, that we're, try, we're trying to be more aware of people's needs, whether or not that's our experience or not. I'm not saying that I would need that or, or find it useful, but... I'm sure there are people for who those those warnings are useful. And like I say, you have to find it on the website. You, it's not round down your throat. You can read it, or you, you don't have to read it. It's yeah, your choice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I mean, you're right. Life has changed. Society has changed. Uh, but I do think uh, you know we're a bit nanny state about some of this stuff. Uh, how is the uh, theatre trade going these days? How's the West End doing, though, Matt? You know what, thanks for asking, Kevin, because it's really interesting times. I think when, after the pandemic, we all assumed that it would be regional theatre bounce back and West End struggled because of tourists and things like that. And actually what I think we're finding is the West End is doing very, very well. And where the problems are and where the issues are is with regional theatre. Um, you know, it's really struggling. It's really hard outside of London for lots of theatres, especially because councils are cutting funding left, right and centre. And the first thing to go sometimes is the arts. Mm. So the question, I guess, for the next government will be how are they going to support theatres that aren't in the West End? Because that's where the, the real support needs to be. Uh, so, uh, but, get, but, but we're fairly healthy then. Uh, taking Because I, when I heard that you were coming on as a guest, it reminded me, talking about the pandemic, uh, you, I don't know if you can cast your mind back that far, but uh, you got me some tickets from Come From Away. Uh, if ever, anyone ever gets the chance, an absolutely brilliant musical uh, about uh, uh, the what happened in the advent of 9-11, uh, uh, where everybody got uh, diverted and they had to land in Newfoundland. And it's about yeah. these people who suddenly gathered in this far-off place. But anyway, it's a brilliant uh, uh, musical and uh, I'd seen it once before but you got me some more tickets and then we couldn't go because my wife said we, we're going to get COVID if we go so that was just at, literally if I can use this analogy as the curtain was falling on live theatre because of the COVID uh, mm -hmm. crisis has it sort of taken this long to get to a position where at least we can uh, afford to be optimistic about the future of live theatre? I mean, I definitely think there's optimism. Um, and like I say, the West End is in a very healthy state and we're seeing audiences have flocked back and there's, you know, the tourists are going to see shows. Unfortunately, Come From Away is no longer in the West End, but you can catch it on tour. It remains one of my favourite musicals. Like you say, it's it's one of the most uplifting experiences you can have, considering the subject matter as well. Um, you know, the fact that it, it reminds you about community and, and the spirit of kind of like coming together in the in the face of kind of, awful awful experiences um but yeah i think like i say west end we're, we're really seeing positive healthy um audiences returns more so than on broadway which i think is really struggling but i think like i say the focus has to be on regional theater and where those theaters in the in the kind of that means so much to people who live in towns and cities how they're going to be supported because they're the ones that are really struggling yeah yeah. Well, uh, as you know, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, live theatre. So uh, I wish uh, you, your magazine uh, and the theatre trade generally all the best. Matt, great to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Matt Hemley, there, Deputy Editor of The Stage. We go back a while, me and Matt.